Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in Niagara Falls, New York. And I visited Niagara Falls earlier this year, and I focused mainly on the Canadian side, but I realized I'd never actually come over to the American side and saw the falls from that angle. So I figured today we would check out uh, the, the falls themselves here on the American side. We are currently in Niagara Falls State Park here in New York. We have come out to what is called Terrapin Point. Falls are right behind us there. So we'll, let's, let's go take a look. Follow me. see Niagara River there coming up to the falls. Now to me, Niagara Falls is one of the absolute most beautiful natural things I've ever seen with my own two eyes. You can see the rapids of the river there and how it just literally falls off a cliff. This is what's known as the Horseshoe Falls on this side of, uh, of Niagara Falls. It's made up of several waterfalls, but this is the biggest and just most breathtaking of them, the Horseshoe Falls. You can see how that mist rises out of the falls and obscures the skyline there over in Canada. When I was driving in to the city here, I could actually see this giant plume of mist blocking out the skyline from miles and miles away. It is absolutely breathtaking, but let's go take a closer look. You can see all the people here enjoying the falls, taking their pictures in front of the falls there. You can see the rapids here in the Niagara River. It's actually really clear. The water you can see right to the bottom. It's fresh, clean water here. Heading over the falls right there, you can see where it dumps over the edge. All right, looks as we head into this area, things get a bit misty. You can see the ground is wet. So we might uh, get a little mist on the lens of the camera. There you can see almost the very tip of the falls here. We got this little tiny, little tiny side waterfall right there, but you can see the massive amount of water just pouring off the edge there. Just look at that water go crashing down there. You can see it smashing on those rocks immediately turning into mist. If you look really closely through the mist, you can see the wall of water there. That's all part of the same falls. And as I look at this, all I can think about is the tradition of going over the falls in a wooden barrel. I mean, just imagine going over that edge there inside of a barrel. See the tour boat coming there. See everyone in their blue ponchos. Of course, if they're wearing blue, that means they are on the Maid of the Mist, coming from the American side. The Canadian side wearing the red ponchos is the Hornblower Tours, coming from the Canadian side. So the falls over there, next to the bridge, known as the American Falls, because they're the, the falls that come directly from the American side. And there it is. The Maid of the Mist coming to brave the falls. They sail the boat directly into the vicinity of the falls. That's why they're wearing the ponchos, because they're all about to get doused by the falling water. Oh, you can actually hear them screaming as they're starting to get doused by the water. They vanish into the mist there. It's pretty fun. I've done, uh, done the horn blower tour. Had a lot of fun doing that. Not done the, uh, the, the Made of the Mist here on the American side. I don't know if you can really see them or not, but fully engulfed in the mist there. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun being on those boats, getting splashed by the waterfalls. If you can see my glasses are completely 
covered in sprinkles actually get fairly wet just standing here on the lookout looking at the falls. See the elevator going down there from the uh, observation tower over there in Canada. Over there you can see the Ferris wheel over in Clifton Hill, the uh, super tourist area of the Niagara Falls region. Yeah, just look at, look at that cloud of mist. We're gonna walk over here and see if we can catch a glimpse of the American Falls. And there they are, the American Falls. Looks like we can actually take the stairs down that way to get a closer look. As we cross over this bridge here, this river here empties over that edge there. That is Bridal Veil Falls, another one of the falls that uh, composes the Niagara Falls system. And you can see between Bridal Veil Falls and American Falls, there is a, uh, a lookout there right in the middle. You see again how clean that water looks. You can see the made of the mist here. Oh, it looks like it's pulling in to see the falls. See Bridal Veil Falls going over the edge there. And look at this down here. This is the Cave of the Winds. People can tour this cave and they're walking on these platforms, which I'm sure give them beautiful views, but they're pretty much just the waterfalls pretty much is pouring on their heads. They're wearing those yellow ponchos to protect themselves, but I, I, I bet they're still gonna get a little soggy. Yeah, you can just see there's people down there, literally, it looks like they're laying down, letting, letting the waterfall pour on their heads. Oh wow, these are people who don't mind getting a little wet, apparently. It's, it is rather hot today, so that might be a little refreshing standing directly underneath Niagara Falls. And then finally over on this side of the observation area we have the American Falls. Pretty impressive. You know, the Horseshoe Falls are absolutely breathtaking, but this is, this is a, this is a close runner up. You see over there, there is an observation tower where people can walk out over the river and see the falls. And here we have Nikola Tesla, famous for inventing alternating current. He's revered here in Niagara Falls because he helped create the power plant that harnessed its force to create electricity and helped us disperse alternating current across the country. You can see in a lot of these statues, you can see but there's certain parts that people touch. The green and gray parts have the patina on it, but people wear off the patina by touching different parts. So it seems that people are uh, often jump up and sit in his blueprints. You can see, I guess, a tradition to sit on Tesla's lap in his blueprints. Um, of course, I, I, I would jump up there and sit on Tesla, but uh, I don't think I'm spry enough to, uh, to, to scramble up that far on the statue. It's incredibly hot today. I got a, uh, a drink over here at the drink stand. I, got, I want to get myself a bottled water, but they were selling water, Aquafina, in cans. I have not had Aquafina in a can, so uh, let's see what it tastes like. Okay, so just a, just a can of water. Water in a can. Mmm, I think it tastes good in a can. The can is nice and cold itself keeps the water nice and cold. And you know, you don't get that slight plasticky taste, so I'm all for Aquafina in a can. I think, I was gonna say you can recycle this, but you can recycle a bottle too, so I don't think there's any difference there. Oh, that is good water. Here we are at Top 
of the Falls restaurant. There's a restaurant overlooking the Falls. Actually, I have already eaten this afternoon, but uh, they do have a gift shop down here at the bottom. Notice they have these golf balls here. Golf balls with an image of Niagara Falls on them, so I guess they are Niagara Balls. There's a big coffee cup there and a little shot glass. I have no idea what these tiny mugs are for. Is that for like taking a shot of uh, maple syrup? They didn't have any snow globes but they do have some Christmas ornaments. You can see uh, Santa there piloting the Maid of the Mist or wearing the yellow jumpsuit from Cave of the Winds or just parting the falls while creating a rainbow. I guess that's just a big old falls to hang on your tree. I find their lack of snow globes to be puzzling. I feel like that is the perfect souvenir for Niagara Falls. I guess you could always just take home this happy rainbow with arms. Here's a non-distinct building brick version of Niagara Falls. So now that we've seen the falls, let's uh, head into town where we can uh, learn all about Niagara Falls. So we're going to stop in here at the Niagara Wax Museum of History to learn all about the city, the falls, everything Niagara related. And we enter here on the corner through the gift shop. Entering through the gift shop. What an interesting concept. One of the great things about this gift shop is plenty of snow globes. Got all different styles of snow globe. This one has uh, one of the boats there in front of the Canadian skyline. Over here we have have one of the boats being lifted up into the air. That's pretty cool. Look at you can see all the people terrified peeking out there as their boat is lifted. And then yeah that's a completely separate view of Niagara Falls. So a, a wonderful assortment of Niagara Falls snow globes. Rosebud. All right, heading into the wax museum here. You can see the daredevil there with his daredevil barrel. He's planning on going over Niagara Falls. All right, let's head in. We start out with Father Louis Hennepin here and his claim to fame is he is the first white man to view the falls. So he was just walking out of the woods and came across this and was the first white person to see it. Of course, hundreds, hundreds of people had seen it before him. But uh, yeah, first white guy. Over here we have some of the people that saw the falls before Louis there. See the Native American sitting by the fire. His small child there in his lap. Here is Rene LaSalle. Said he explored the Niagara frontier in the 1600s. So he's on a ship here. He's got his Igor like assistant looming over the edge. Says these are the three major groups that influenced the Niagara Falls region. We have the Indians there in the center, a British man here, and then this guy with the awesome hat. He represents the French. There's the Iroquois Confederacy. I guess these are different animals to represent the different groups that made up the Iroquois. And down here, some Indian artifacts there. And of course, what would the Niagara Falls Wax Museum be without a little bit of water? Here we have the John Kerr Sawmill. It says that they were the first to take advantage of Niagara Falls water power. It talks about the Devil's Hole Massacre. 
said that there was, I guess, a dispute over transporting goods between the white settlers and the Indians, which led to the Indians hiding out and ambushing some uh, white settlers in wagons. And you see they've all been smashed. He's got a bloody head wound over there. This woman, she's she's been completely murdered right there. As you can see, the wreckage. It looks like they murdered the wagon. The wagon has been exploded there. As she, her, her dead, rotting corpse lays there. Oh, look at this guy. Bleeding, his head wound, his facial wound leaking into the water there. It also mentions up here that Devil's Hole Massacre was considered the first labor strike. And boy, it struck hard. Heading into Fort Niagara here. Now Jen tells me that when she was in elementary school that she would take a field trip to Fort Niagara almost every year. Here we are inside a Fort Niagara, the enlisted men's bunk. Looks like we just have one singular enlisted man laying here sleeping all alone. Here's the timeline of Fort Niagara. It was begun by the French in 1679 captured by the British in 1759, occupied by the United States in 1796, and it was restored in 1927. I don't know, do you guys think I should take a visit myself to Fort Niagara? Over here we have a display of some old-timey firemen deep into a game of checkers. Here we have the blacksmith shop. You can see hard at work making some horseshoes there over the burning fire. You look, look into his face and see the sweat beaming down, the despondent look in his face. You just tell how much he totally hates being a blacksmith. Heading into Niagara Falls Fire Hall here. See who's inside the fire hall. Oh, it's, uh, it's Mother Teresa here inside the fire hall um, says mother Teresa is revered because of her inner beauty and like the falls of niagara proves god's beauty and grace commands the world now you know this is a historic wax museum some of these figures were made a long time ago and it's been in place for quite some time some uh things have come out about no other Teresa in the last uh few decades that uh make her not as much an object of hero worship like she once was. And who else do we have here in the fire hall? Well, none other than Princess Diana. It's Princess Diana of England, an aristocrat and beauty, affirms that beauty is not in the eye of the holder, but in the love you have for God, your country, and your fellow man. So some very glowing words about these figures. Also, we have Julia Roberts. Up there it says Julia Roberts and other stars of stage and screen reaffirm beauty passes on with time. It is in the loving that you are loved and it is the giving you receive. So I guess we can take inspiration from Julia Roberts and other famous movie people. Nothing in the movie industry could ever be bad or wrong or terrible. Talks about the hydroelectricity generated by Niagara Falls. We can see the worker here climbing up the pole, the power pole. You can see him staring upwards in to the power lines. One wonderful display of old Niagara Falls souvenirs. Little teeny tiny purses. I don't even know what you would put in a purse that tiny. So got the Niagara Falls beaded pillow there. The famed Niagara Falls panda with some other trinkets there. Oh, we have the plastic Niagara Falls back scratcher there. One of the most practical and efficient souvenirs. So baseball autographed by Sal the Barber Magley says that he was uh, on the Brooklyn Dodgers which, uh, given the context, I'd say they're probably a baseball team. Oh wait, it says this well is haunted. The ha haunted well here. I'm almost terrified to look 
down in it. Okay, it's not haunted, it's just full of pennies. Now, this is Red Jacket here, he is a Indian chief here in the Niagara region, and he is receiving a peace medal from uh, George Washington, our first president. Actually, look at this chair here. It says this chair was used for treaty negotiations on the Niagara frontier. And here in this plexiglass cube, we have Mr. Abraham Lincoln there, one of our fine United States presidents. Here's a very interesting horoscope machine. This is New Forecast Monthly. You can see the fortune teller inside the machine there. Although unfortunately, I think it is out of order. So we enter the barber shop here. It says Abraham Lincoln visited Niagara Falls in 1957. So, oh, okay, we have another Abraham Lincoln over there. And here is uh, the barber. Oh, it says this, this barber chair in which Abraham Lincoln received tonsorial work when he visited Niagara Falls. So wait a minute, Abraham Lincoln, right there, received tonsorial work. So did he have his tonsils removed? Did he have his tonsils taken out while he was sitting in this chair? And, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. The barber looks a lot like JFK, which, uh, I don't know, maybe this is a, this is an interesting piece of the multiverse going on here. Abraham Lincoln having his tonsils removed by JFK. I have a candy store in here as well. Some artifacts in here. We have a boot scraper where you can scrape the crud off the bottom of your boot and a mustache cup. They have a little piece that protects your mustache while you're taking a sip. Some delightful corn husk dolls and some apple dolls. You see the faces would be carved out of an apple and the apple would rot and shrivel and become their heads. Look at this. Look at this apple lady here. Look at her. Look at her teeth. Looks like this guy's apple shriveled a little too much. This room has a diorama showing us the Niagara River and the falls. So it starts here at Lake Erie, moves out here, and then this island here, that is where we visited earlier today where you could see the Horseshoe Falls on this side, and then the American Falls on that side. Now here is a model of Niagara Falls. This is actually showing an interesting story here. You can see the falls have created ice here along the way, and it said it created so much ice that it created a bridge that you could walk from America to Canada. But it says that while people were crossing the ice bridge, it actually collapsed and you can see the people there, little people stranded on the icebergs. People from this bridge here are dropping a little wire down, trying to rescue the people stuck on the collapsed ice bridge. Traveling to different wax museums, I find that Mark Twain, possibly the most common wax figure that you'll find, he seems to pop up in almost every wax museum. The context here is that Mark Twain's wrote poems and prose about the falls. It says this way to the pictorial hall of presidents. So we head in here and they do not have wax figures of all the presidents, but they do have pictures of all the presidents hanging here on the wall. See JFK who famously removed Abraham Lincoln's tonsils. And then we have all the way up to uh, Donald Trump. They have not yet added a, uh, a Joe Biden. In this room we have another model of the falls. So we look over here. Oh, yep, you can see the sign over there. 
it says you are here you can see it says wax museum on top of that building so yeah we are not very far from the falls themselves right now now uh this is the island we were on okay i guess this is called goat island i did not know that i did not see any goats while it's on goat island but we visited goat island earlier today we went out here to uh to terrapin point where we saw the horseshoe falls we crossed over that little bridge that's the bridal veil falls there and witnessed the american falls oh this exhibit here is uh under repair you can see they have a wax worker fortunately it looks like he's sleeping on the job so maybe it'll be a, maybe a while before we get uh our new exhibit there's thomas edison it says he's working on the theory of transmitting electricity from niagara falls interesting they have edison but they don't have his his rival tesla who uh created the power plants that harness niagara falls but they do have his uh the joker to his batman mr thomas edison now we enter an exhibit on the daredevils of niagara falls including some actual objects used to go over the falls this is the jean lucier ball so yeah went inside the ball here and went over top the falls and that's just thinking about seeing the falls earlier that is that is insane ball was used in uh, 1927 you can see the inside of the ball there not much to it really there's like a series of vents so that he could breathe and then just a big chamber in the middle we have newspaper clippings from all the different daredevils that went over the falls i guess over here we have the latest daredevil the most recent daredevil it says his name is carol socek and uh i guess he went over the falls in 1984. so i guess then pretty quiet with uh daredevils going over the falls since then this is bobby leach's barrel you can see the big uh smash in the side where it hit the bottom of the falls just put himself in a big metal tube and went over the falls there's a former pilot wheel from the made of the mist boat right there that's pretty cool here we have anna taylor a, a woman who went over the falls in the early 1900s she survived a little bruised and battered but she survived and here is the barrel that she did it in that's crazy just a wooden barrel just stuck herself in a wooden barrel and let it wash over top the falls and here is ann taylor as they pulled her from the barrel says that they found her three hours after she went over the falls she was bloody and battered but she succeeded see them trying to get her out of the falls there on that board if you come at night niagara falls is actually illuminated and lit up and this is actually one of the lights that used to help illuminate the falls see here's a rescue boat out in the falls pulling this man here out of the water and see he's absolutely terrified to have been uh dumped into the river on the corner here we have this vintage cigarette machine it's currently out of order but actually does not have real cigarettes in it has uh, the candy cigarettes there um I, is it is it just me or is it strange that uh that candy cigarettes are are still a thing we have a photo op here where we can take our picture in front of the falls there we go just hanging out here on a bench in the middle of the falls i actually saw these saw these real ones today the real ones were better but it's a close second then we have this photo up here where we can actually put ourselves in a barrel barreling over Niagara Falls. Oh, look at me! 
I'm the greatest man in the world. Going down with the fall. I don't even care if it smashes my head open. I'm gonna be the first man to ever go down the fall with half his body sitting on the top. It says keep smiling there. I of course would encourage every one of you to keep smiling as I'm trapped in this funhouse mirror. But uh, I guess we push our way out back into the gift shop. And yeah, even though the machine wasn't working, you can still buy candy cigarettes here in the gift shop. This here, this is uh, what we would play back in the day when we didn't have apps. You squirt, it's full of water, you squirt, try to land the rings on the ring spikes. So thank you for joining me today here in Niagara Falls, New York, where we went, took a look at the falls themselves, and went and learned all about them here at the Niagara Falls Wax Museum. If you like these videos, please subscribe. It'll let you know when new videos come about. I travel around the country filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop, including the brand new No Scares on Stairs pin, just in time for Halloween. And all that just goes to help keep this train on the track, this boat under the falls, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.